Raymond Coe is a pastor well-known for serving the needy in the name of Christ in the country of Malaysia. Then one day in 2017, he was abducted. It's been more than two years, and Pastor Raymond hasn't been heard from since that day. His car has never been found. His captors have never been identified or brought to trial. And for his daughter, Esther, one of the hardest things to handle is this lack of any concrete information. Because there's no closure, we don't know what they have done exactly. How do you forgive someone whom you don't know who they are and what they have done? Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help, right now on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. In a few minutes, we're going to hear from a wife and a daughter who are living in uncertainty because of the sacrifice Pastor Raymond Coe made for the gospel. First, though, I want to take a little detour. We're marking the five-year anniversary of Voice of the Martyrs Radio. And so all this month, we're going to listen back to some of the most powerful moments from the last five years here on VOM Radio. Now, when we started making weekly programs, ISIS was in the news all the time. And we encouraged our listeners to pray for Christians affected by ISIS. And we also shared with them some good news. Over a several-month span, we had three different stories of people directly connected with ISIS coming to know Christ as Savior and Lord. These stories really resonated with our listeners. In fact, one of the stories went viral. Uh, Glenn Beck's website actually made a story out of it, posted a little clip of the radio show. So let's go back and hear a clip from July of 2015. A gospel worker that we just called Julian tells about an encounter with a man who provided Islamic instruction to ISIS fighters. There was a taxi driver who was a believer up at the border with Syria. And into his taxi gets this guy with a big beard. And the guy with the beard says, "Uh, take me to the airport. I'm flying home to Saudi. But on the way, I want to find a Bible. Can you find me a Bible? (laughs) <laughs> and the taxi driver knew a Christian worker in Beirut who was very happy to give the guy with the beard the Bible. And then, sir, would you like to tell us why you're looking for a Bible? And his response was, I'm uh, from Saudi. I'm a sheikh, I've, which means a teacher of Islam. I've been in Syria teaching the ISIS fighters Jihad 101, the theology and practice of Jihad. I'm sick of the killing. Wow. There must be something better than this. To hear more on that story, just visit the archives at vomradio.net. You can use the search feature or we'll give you a direct link in the summary for this week's episode. We're going to be sharing highlights like that throughout the month of September as we celebrate the five-year anniversary of VOM Radio. And I'd like to hear from you, too. What's been the conversation that impacted you the most over the last five years? How has listening to VOM Radio challenged you or or changed your walk with Christ? I hope you'll let me know, vomradio.net. There's a phone number there. You can leave me a voicemail. There's a little box where you can type in a message, send me an email. But I'd really love to hear from you how you've been impacted over the last five years. Earlier this year, we met Susanna Coe, and we heard her family's dramatic story. She's back this week with an update on the case of the disappearance of Pastor Raymond Coe, and her daughter Esther is with her this week as well. On February 13th, 2017, Susanna's husband, Pastor Raymond Coe, disappeared in the country of Malaysia. He was abducted. There is security camera footage of the abduction, and since that day— He has not been seen or heard from. His car has never been found. He simply disappeared. And so we talked in April about that, and I would encourage you 
Go to vomradio.net, listen to that conversation. You've also read about Pastor Raymond in the September newsletter from the Voice of the Martyrs. So we're going to talk today with an update about the case. We're also going to meet Pastor Raymond's daughter, Esther, and hear sort of her perspective on the story. Esther and Susanna, welcome to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you for having us. Great to be here. Susanna, the last time we talked, the Human Rights Commission in Malaysia was preparing a report about the abduction of Pastor Raymond. I know since then that report has now been issued. What happened? Has that changed anything? Kind of give us an update on where the case is in in sort of the government channels. On April the 3rd, the Human Rights Commission came up with its final decisions and findings. And basically, uh, they have uh, stated that Pastor Raymond and Amrichet Mart were victims of enforced disappearance and that the special forces of Malaysia, particularly Kuala Lumpur, were the culprits. And also they recommended few uh, measures, one of which was to set up a task force to reinvestigate the adoptions. So the Human Rights Commission says it was the special forces who did this. Yes. Have the special forces leadership or commanders, have they responded? Do they deny that? Do they say anything? Or is it just... We know you did this. Yes. uh, Obviously, they were very upset with the (laughs) Human (laughs) Rights Commission uh, for coming up in public to, you know, accuse them of uh, this crime. However, they have denied. So uh, they say, no, it wasn't us. Right. Wow. And I encourage listeners, and we'll give you a link at vomradio.net. There's actual video of the abduction happening. Uh, It is not something that some people woke up that morning and decided to kidnap a pastor. Uh, There were multiple vehicles. I think 13 different people show up in this video. Very coordinated, very professional attack. Um, So it, it looks like a military operation or a police operation. It, it's not amateurs that, that did this. And, and obviously the Human Rights Commission saw that as well. We asked our listeners when we talked to you last time to pray for you first, which I know many of them did, but we also gave your address and asked them to send you cards and letters and encouragement. I know you sent me a picture of, of the cards laid out, but will you just talk about what that meant to start getting those letters in the mailbox? I was very uh, overwhelmed with the support that was coming from especially uh, USA. However, there were some from Africa that wrote and Netherlands and also from New Zealand. I was really encouraged by a young person who actually wrote a song And it was entitled, There is Light at the End of the Tunnel. Wow. And that really touched my heart. And um, this family of God is so wide and uh, loving and supportive of our family. So I want to encourage our listeners. You know, sometimes we wonder, Mm. does it make a difference when I pray? Does it make a difference when I put a postcard in the mail, you're saying, yes, absolutely, it does make a difference. Yes. Susanna, one of the things that's happened in just the last couple of months is you got invited to come to Washington, D.C. and be at the the big State Department event, the Ministerial on Religious Freedom. Can you share, and I know there may be some things you can't talk about publicly, but do you feel like the U.S. government is being helpful to you and and to the case of Pastor Raymond in in trying to get resolution, trying to get an explanation of what happened? Yes, I was very impressed with the different officers that I met uh, in the U.S. State Department. They seemed to uh, be very knowledgeable 
of the case and have been following the developments uh, of the Pastor Raymond's adoption and uh, they even asked me what they could do to, to help me. And I have made some suggestions and I really pray with all my heart that, you know, we will find a resolution, we will have a closure uh, soon regarding this. And I join, and I know our listeners join in that prayer. We're talking with Susanna Coe and her daughter Esther. Susanna's husband, Pastor Raymond Coe, disappeared in 2017 in Malaysia. And I just want to tack on to what Susanna said the U.S. government does have a role to play in this. And so if you're listening to this, you can send a letter to your congressman or your senator or to the State Department and just remind them that we as American citizens, as American voters, we care about Pastor Raymond Coe. We care about religious freedom in other countries because we want our leaders to do what they've done in your case. We want them to care. We want them to ask questions about how can we help? What can we do? Esther, when we talked to your mom last time, she talked about the fact that years before your dad disappeared, he had been threatened. And there were letters sent. There was actually bullets that were sent through the mail basically saying, hey, we know what you're doing and you better stop. You were a teenager at that time. Did you know about these threats or did your parents kind of keep that quiet so you wouldn't worry about it. Uh, yeah, I knew about the threat. Did it yeah. did it worry you? Were you upset about it or or did you just kind of think, well, it that's what my dad does? It was worrying. Yeah, but I didn't really think that they would do anything else than threaten us. So you thought it would just be a threat and then it would kind of quiet down. They they would yes. never actually act on the threat. Yeah, that's right. How did you hear that your father had disappeared? I first heard about what happened when I was at work. So my boss called me to her table and um, she said there was a message, a, a WhatsApp going around that Pastor Raymond had been kidnapped. Yeah, when I heard that, I just ran out of the office and I was crying and I was saying they took him, they took him. How, how did the Lord help you? Even that day, did, did you sense the Lord helping you or did you just feel cut off from, from everything? It was it just traumatic. I just went back home and, and I saw my mom and we, yeah, we didn't say much. And I know your family, we, we talked about the security video that, that people can watch online. Your family actually found that security video. It wasn't the police that went door to door. It was you guys knocking on doors and saying, hey, do you have any video? What were those days like as you were out searching and you're looking and knocking on doors? During those days, we had to find out what what happened to him. We didn't trust the police. So a friend and, and I went door to door uh, knocking and uh, we found we found uh, the first video video clip which shows the uh, shuffling of the feet. Mm -hmm. And later on, we found uh, another house that has had two cameras and they it managed to catch the whole abduction. What has it meant to you to know that people around the world are praying for your dad, they're praying for your mom, they're praying for your family? What... What has that meant to you over the last now two and a half years? It's uh, really yeah, encouraging to know that people who are not in Malaysia and who don't know us, yeah, our culture, but they still pray for us and still remember us. It's just wonderful. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Susanna Coe and her daughter Esther. Uh, Susanna's husband, Pastor Raymond Coe, was abducted on February 13th, 2017, I mentioned earlier, but I'll mention again, we, we met Susanna the first time in April here on Voice of the Martyrs Radio, and I would encourage you to go to vomradio.net, listen to that conversation with Susanna. Uh, it is a very powerful conversation. You can also read about Pastor Raymond and about this story in the September newsletter from the Voice of the Martyrs. Uh, Esther, 
over the last two and a half years, you've watched your mom go through probably the hardest thing that, that any of us could go through. What, what have you learned from her or what have you seen in her over that two and a half years? Uh, I've seen my mom <laughs> from being a housewife to being able to speak in uh, crowds and <laughs> speaking to the media. She's very strong and I see that strength coming out from in this, very in this circumstance. Before this happened, you wouldn't have imagined your mom going to the State Department and speaking to government no. officials and you never would have thought no, that? No, never. What do you think it is that that has enabled her to do that, to, to stand up and be so strong in, in this hard circumstance? I think it is the years that she was a missionary when she went to India and I was on the ship and her journey with God during those times has helped her today. Prepared yeah, her. Prepared her, yes. I don't doubt that, that, that God certainly was preparing you. One of the things that your mom talked about when we talked last time was the fact that God had been preparing your dad for this as well. And, you know, his prayer life had increased. His scripture memorization had increased. And she didn't think a lot about it when it was going on. But afterwards, she thought, wow, God was getting him ready for this. Did you notice any of that in in your dad's life that that he seemed to be more focused on spiritual things? Well, my dad has always been someone who is self-giving. So he would sacrifice things for us, for his children. And uh, I think just living that life of selflessness has mm-hmm. has prepared him for for this. What's the yeah. thing you miss most about your dad in the last two and a half years? I miss his smile. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's, um, uh, he would always, um, before I go out to work, he would say, I love you, and he would give me a big hug. They, they always gave me strength to before I go to work. Mm-hmm. What would you say, and when I talked to your mom before, she talked about wrestling with her emotions towards the people who had abducted Pastor Raymond. Uh, and she talked about the fact there were sometimes she was really mad at them, but, but that God had enabled her to forgive them. Have you gotten to that point as well where you can say, I forgive these people? Are you still working through that? Was that difficult? How do you feel about the people who abducted your father? And I know that's a hard question. I feel I feel sad that they would do something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but because there's no closure, we don't know what they have done exactly. Mm-hmm. So how do you forgive right. uh, someone who... You don't know who they are and what they have done. I, they just I completely understand what you're so saying. Yes, the case is not closed. You don't know everything, so it's hard to forgive what you don't know what has happened, and you don't know who. You don't know who the people are. I want to encourage people, and we always encourage people, to pray for different situations, and we have had people praying for you and your family, and I know you've gotten some of the cards. How can we pray for for your family and for you two and a half years since your father was abducted? Please pray that, first of all, that Raymond will be found and he will be released, and also pray for wisdom for the family as we deal with the government and the police, and also please pray for our government that they will do the right thing and find Raymond. Amen. I, th- I think of your family and that prayer for wisdom and for discernment because you are, 
you're dealing with the Malaysian government and you're dealing with the police and you're dealing with the press and you're dealing with the American government and other governments. And so just that prayer, I, I that resonates with me, that prayer for wisdom to know how to deal with each of these different groups and people. And, uh, and again, I, I join you. We pray that Pastor Raymond will be found, located, and returned to his family. Uh, we want that to happen. Is there ways, Susanna, especially the, the Human Rights Commission has now established this group that is reinvestigating the case. Are, are there specific ways we can pray for that process and for those people? Yes. What happened was that the Home Minister announced this setting up of the task force, and we actually questioned the credibility of some of the members as they were ex-policemen, ex-judge, and uh, lawyers. And we have expressed some of our reservations However, the Home Minister did try to concede to some of our requests. And right now, I think they are beginning the process of questioning the, the police officers. However, they have decided to put the reinvestigation of Raymond's case on hold. Uh, that means they will start with Amri Chetmat's uh, case first. And... and Tell us who he is. He... Uh, Amri Chetmat is a social activist who was alleged to be spreading uh, Shia teachings. So he was a Muslim, but mm. he also just disappeared, S right. similar to how Pastor Raymond just disappeared. True. Except in his case, they don't have video, right? Is that right? Okay. But they had uh, eyewitnesses. Okay. And there was a whistleblower uh, who, who was from the special forces in uh, a state in the north, corporalist, and he admitted that the same team that took Amri Chetmat also took Pastor Raymond. Wow. How is God sustaining you? You are, like Esther said, you're doing things that you probably never imagined you'd be doing. How How is the Lord being faithful to you through that? Um, I think it's uh, through the the strength and grace of God that, you know, I'm able to get out of bed <laughs> every morning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's just being in a close relationship with God, just, uh, you know, having my quiet time every morning, reading His Word, that spurs me on. And also realizing that maybe God has a purpose for all this, although I don't wish this to happen to anyone. Yeah, This has uh, brought us closer as a family and us closer to God. And it has brought a lot of positive things to the church in Malaysia, uh, the unity that it brought among the, the churches, the leaders, and the spirit of prayer. And I just want to be in the center of God's will. And if he wants to use me to be a voice to others who do not have that voice and to speak out on injustices, you know, then I would willingly do that for for God's namesake and just be a vessel that he could use for his glory and honor. Amen. And he, he is letting you do that. He is uh, allowing, I know many people were blessed. Well, the last time you were with us on VOM Radio, I heard a lot of really good feedback about, wow, God is really, that's an amazing woman. God has really ministered to her and, and been faithful to her. And you certainly have been faithful through this last two and a half years. And even before that, it's a great blessing for us to have the chance to help share your story. Uh, and I know we're going to encourage people again to send you a card, send you a note. I know those were a blessing to you. Esther, Susanna, thank you for sharing on Voice of the Mars Radio and uh, we encourage people to pray for you and to pray for Malaysia and pray for Pastor Raymond this week. Thank, Thank you, you for this opportunity. 
And thank you all of you out there who've been praying for us. You are a blessing to us. We've been talking today with Susanna Coe here on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Her husband, Pastor Raymond Coe, was abducted on February 13th, 2017. We have also been talking with their daughter, Esther. You can read more about Susanna and her story in the free Voice of the Martyrs magazine this month. If you're not already a subscriber, click on the free magazine link at vomradio.net. And again, I want to encourage you, if you did not hear my first conversation with Susanna in April, go to vomradio.net and listen to that conversation. It's going to give you some more insight and some more background into the situation. And I know you're also going to be encouraged as you hear Susanna's faithfulness that just comes through in that conversation so clearly. I also want to encourage you, come to vomradio.net and we'll give you the address to send a card or a note or a letter of encouragement to Susanna and Esther and their family. Please do that. Take advantage of that opportunity. As she has shared, it makes a difference. It is a great encouragement to them. So come to vomradio.net. We'll give you the address where you need to mail that to. And like I say, I would just encourage you, make a point of doing that this week. Invite others with you. Take the address with you to your Sunday school class or in your small group or Bible study group. Share that around. Let's flood her mailbox with cards and letters and encouragement coming from Voice of the Martyrs Radio listeners. You know, it's also an encouragement when you write to us here at VOM Radio. I want to share what a young lady named Jordan wrote just within the last couple of weeks. My name is Jordan Elizabeth, and I wanted to share what an impact VOM Radio has had on me. When I was 11 years old, I'm 17 now, God called me to be a missionary. I didn't know then how God was going to prepare me for that, but now I can look back and see what he has used in my life. VOM Radio has definitely been a part of that. Hearing the stories of how unreached people came to know the Lord has kept my passion for missions burning. In fact, I am planning to attend college at Bethany Global University to get missions training after hearing the interview with Bethany International's president on VOM Radio. I know that the Lord has used this ministry to give my calling some direction, and I appreciate what you do so much. I got to tell you, this letter is a direct answer to our prayers that God would use VOM Radio to call people into his service and especially to call young people into mission service. So, Jordan, thank you so much for sharing that story. Uh, I got to say that email absolutely made my day. So thank you for sharing that. And God bless you as you continue to serve him and as you train to serve him overseas. I hope that you will consider writing to us just like Jordan did and let us know how VOM Radio has affected your walk with Christ. You can do that online at vomradio.net. At the bottom of the page, there's a box where you can type in your note. There's also a toll-free phone number there if you'd rather call and leave a voicemail. I read every email, I listen to every voicemail, and I would love to hear from you how Voice of the Martyrs Radio has impacted you. So again, please share your story at vomradio.net. Next week here on Voice of the Martyrs Radio, we're going to meet a church leader from Ethiopia where persecution can come from a lot of different directions. But it's also a place where the body of Christ is continuing to grow. We're going to hear more about that as we meet him next week right here on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.